Hey guys, welcome back to some more Majora's Mask and welcome back to Stone Tower Temple. This time, flipped upside down. A little different. Hey, hey, hey guys. You know, you, you saw me beat Stone Tower Temple. Want, want to see me do it again? <laughs> this time, flipped on its head. And you play Stone Tower Temple, but flipped upside down? Yes, actually, that, that's not even a challenge. It's literally the gimmick of the dungeon. I, I thought this was kind of cool as a kid. I'm sure we all did. It was like, oh, cool. Yeah. We need to go through it again. Like, now we also understand why all those chests we were hitting on the right side of the dungeon is upside down. Because these upside down chests you can eventually get when you flip the whole dungeon upside down. It's a really cool idea. And it does build up to the, well, whole flipping thing before you get told by the Garrow Master. Yeah, basically shooting a switch will flip the whole world. Asterisk, it doesn't flip the whole world, just flips the stone tower area. If you leave this area, it it's normal. You're not going to walk on sky. That would be weird if it flipped the whole world. Maybe that's what we need to do. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, if we flip the whole entire world, the moon will fall down up. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just flip the whole planet and hopefully the moon flips with us. So that means it just goes away. <laughs> like an hourglass. You flip it the other way, you get more time, right? Yeah. I forget how to fight those dudes. You have to get rid of their mask, because even the behind section, for some reason, is armored with that mask on, and that makes absolutely no sense. He's covering that booty. Even though he's really not. <laughs> it's like, I'm covering the booty with this invisible mask of booty. That, that sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Yeah, he really does. Mask of booty. Well, he's dead now. He dead, Jim. Yeah, basically to fight the mask variant of that enemy, you either pull the mask off with the hook shot or bomb it. And then you can actually attack it proper. Gonna scoot around everything. Watch out for the spike bombs! Yeah, I don't want to hit the spike bombs. Only two more. Yeah, majority of your stray fairies are actually on the right side up section. So, really only five of them you get from this side. But the problem with the dungeon's idea is they intend for you to flip this dungeon around multiple times to get all the stray fairies. Kind of why in the last part I took some creative liberties to get certain ones a little earlier. To flip this dungeon multiple times, it gets a little annoying. I see you're just gonna refuse to be Goron, aren't you? Look, man, I don't have it equipped. It, it, it takes a moment to pause the screen and then to put it on and then to run. <laughs> oh, okay. You're just lazy. Got like 17 hearts with double defense. I, that, it's fine. You're just lazy. You want really something that's gonna take up the rest of your time? Here's this room. The most annoying one in the dungeon. I don't like this one much. The idea is interesting, and it goes on for far too long. Yeah. Because you gotta push this thing, flip it, push it some more, flip it again. Yeah, and you gotta push it in certain areas too, because you're noticing there's cutouts on the floor. Where if the box is in that section, it cannot be pushed past a certain point because the lips. So you gotta be careful how far you push it. You don't want to put it in an impossible to move section. And the only way to fix that is to flip the whole room around, just to move it, and then you can flip it again to continue. Go away, shoes. At least you don't have to worry about magic or arrows, because of these shoes in here. This is the only time you see a yellow shoe. It's really just this room, and they're for arrows only. Man, I didn't know shoes dropped arrows. That was just magic. I mean, they really don't exist outside of this room, so I don't blame you. Really, the only yellow shoes I really know of are the electric types, which is like Wind Waker. They hurt. Yeah, I was gonna say, they, they only exist in this room, I'm like, put them in a museum! <laughs> exactly, no, take them out of Stone Tower, put them in the National Museum of Termina. They're endangered species! Speaking of endangered species... How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? It's like one of five! Yeah, exactly. It's literally that. Stop showing up. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? This one you think you're done. 
It turns a SpongeBob quote that fits perfectly into that. <laughs> Just when you think you're done with a stink when Riz Rope, he shows up again. This is the second dungeon he's in. Getting kind of old, buddy. You can tell what their favorite mini boss was. This is like the fourth one that you had to fight. It was like the tenth at this point. Yep. And there's still one more left. There's still one more. Why? But no, that's like the perfect SpongeBob quote for this guy. To be honest. <laughs> How many times do I teach? I sure do love the young people. <laughs> Thinking of a dangerous species from earlier, the only room that have normal pose in the whole game. This is it. And they are a different drop. So this is the only place to get a postal for your bottles if you want that for whatever reason. It sells for basically nothing at the curiosity shop. I think it's like 20 rupees. And you have a chance of either healing or hurting yourself when you drink the postal. So it's not really worth getting it in this game. But it's the only room in the whole game you can get them. It's also going to be our last time we need to use the LG of Emptiness is right here. Goodbye, Song. Never again. Never Thank again. Oh, Bye, Ben. It's been a pleasure knowing you. Fairy Boy, what did you do to me? Fairy Boy, I lost everything. <laughs> so, yeah, these guys can't see you when you wear stone mask, so... Wear that if you don't want to fight them. But these statues, you cannot kill by normal means. You have to hit the emblem on them. Which, remember how that works. Hit the emblem with the light arrow, and it flips things. Which includes those uh, armored guards. When they normally pound the ground, they're pounding down on like a solid surface. They're fine. When they're flipped over, they use their heads to attack you. Which is why they die in one shot. It's taking like the, the phrase, using your head a little too literally, and they snap it off. Maybe don't use your head in this situation. <laughs> Also, yeah, that is a good idea to blow those fight bombs up before you go over here, because if you hit them and you fall, have fun getting back up here. I think you have to hit them for that reason, because I don't think there's a big enough gap to even make that fly. Unless you're very low with the flower. I've seen some people try, and then they get mad when they realize where they land. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm jinxed. Whatever shall I do? Alright, hang on, let me just wash this off. No, what you need to do is you need to ban the episode that it appeared in. Ah, there you go. Easy money. Ah, normally playing that twice gets rid of the rain. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Rot row. Man, that's one big bad bat with a scythe. I like this boss. This is your mini boss of the dungeon. It's essentially the Grim Reaper. So, uh, continue with those dark tones of Majora's Mask, Grim Reaper. Rated E for everyone. And a kid is fighting him. That feel when the kid kills the Grim Reaper. That safe mine now, I want it. What is this, Billy and Mandy? Never did watch that show. I watched it. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it's a good it show. It's moments, though, where it's just weird. Yeah, well, I mean, kind of like any cartoon, especially back in the the earlier days of Cartoon Network. You know, before they forgot they were a Cartoon Network and actually aired everything but cartoons. So, what do you call them now? Just network? Yeah, I still don't understand that. I don't know, um, man. Um, Bad Network? Can we call it that? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. The rename. No, if we want to keep the CN abbreviation, we go from Cartoon Network to Crap Network. Crap Network. It's like that one uh, picture said, I miss the old Cartoon Network, and it has like Johnny Bravo, Courage, and all that stuff, and then it shows like the new Cartoon Network, and nobody's watching it. Yeah. I mean, they took a radical shift because Nickelodeon was doing really good at one point with their live action reality TV shows, and Cartoon Network's like, we can do that too. But none of them took off in the same way as Nick, and that's pretty much all they really do. I mean, they have cartoons still, it's just 
sometimes it got overshadowed, especially in certain years, it definitely was overshadowed by reality TV. The problem with Cartoon Network nowadays is they won't show anything but Teen Titans Go, man. Yeah, it's pretty much a Teen Titans Go network. I don't know why. Literally only ever see that show ever air on the on the station anymore. I'm like, dude, do you not show anything else? It really does make you think. That's all they have. Apparently. That's all they caught. I mean, I know they had Adventure Time and, and you know, regular show and Steven Universe for a long time, but I think all three of those shows ended. I mean, honestly, the only other big thing they had at one point that did bring people back in was... Dragon Ball Super's English dub, because they got it. Not, I don't think it was Adult... No, no, it was still Adult Swim, but Adult Swim is, you know, Cartoon Network still. Not brought in views. Doubly so when you're getting near the, the end of it, the Tournament of Power. Because everyone wants to see that new form again. Now we flip the, the stone tower yet again. Yeah, we, we're really having to do this just for one stray fairy, because unfortunately, you're always going to have at least that one stray fairy you're going to have to flip this dungeon for. Going to do a little bit of god power again. And uh, yeah, there you go. I'm not doing LG. I said that was the last time playing LG in another room. I wasn't kidding, because nah, I don't need it anymore. All right, go get your street fairy. Yeah, we're literally here just for this one chest. Kind of feels like a little bit of a roundabout thing. There you go. And now I know I could walk back up there, but what are legs and arms to climb? I'm just gonna soar. You're just lazy. Just admit that you're lazy. This is way fast. Dude, you, you, the ladder speed in this game is booty. Link climbs very slow. Dude. You were literally five feet away from it! I don't have a dash button like the Breath of the Wild climb. Buster, just say you're lazy and say I didn't want to move. Man, you really are hard trying to just not, not play correctly at all. I don't want to play LG again. <laughs> don't. You're stubborn. I could have done something else here called a weird shot, but the problem with weird shots in Majora's Mask is if you fail it, it can easily crash the game, so that's like the one thing I don't want to do. <laughs> you essentially get like a very specific set of frames when a bomb explodes and you roll into it while pulling out something like the hook shot of the bow, and Link can kind of just clip through objects and aim through them. But with how things work in Majora's Mask on certain damage frames, if you do certain actions on certain frames, it can just flat out crash the game. You gotta be extremely careful with that move. That's weird. You can do the same trick in Ocarina of Time, but the the whole damage thing is different in that game, so you don't really crash if you fail a weird shot. You, you can hit all the wrong frames and the game won't crash. If you're playing Randomizer and playing with certain tunic colors, though, it just flat out crashes, so uh, like, there's that. Maybe just play with the green one. Man, I gotta remember that Chateau Romani strat every time I play this game now. Yeah, you never have to worry about magic again. Dude, you just uh, never have to worry about magic the whole cycle. Dude, go away. Jeez. You're a little bit more annoying than your right side up counterpart just because his eye kept on getting blocked. He has a lot better defense than his brother. Oh, guess what? Guess what we get? We get ourselves our last thingy. Yeah, the second item of the dungeon. Very different because no other dungeon had two items like this. The giant's mask. That's not there in 3DS. They move it. Shocker, I know. Like they changed everything in the game, right? Where did they move the giant's mask to? They moved it into the fight that's coming up. Oh, really? Because just like every other fight, this one's different in 3DS. And this one out of all four is the most radically different one too. Is that the only one, only place that you use the mask for? You can only use it in this boss fight because notice how I equip it, it is grayed out. And it won't become available to use until we jump down this little swirly hole. Now you can see for that split second, I can actually wear the mask. 
it's only this arena that you can wear, and that goes for both this version and 3DS. If you try to put it on outside of this arena, uh, the game essentially just soft locks because what you're doing is essentially just... It's almost like you're swapping maps when you think about it, when you put on the mask. So, putting it on anywhere else, it just doesn't work. Anyways, this is Twin Mold. So, they intend for you to fight this guy with Giant's Mask, but what if you had no magic? Because this is a magic draining mask. So, what you can do instead is snipe this guy from down below using the arrows. And in fact, you need to do this in 3DS, because starting this fight off in that version, you do not have Giant's Mask. So, you have to fight one of the two Twin Molds, which is just the blue one. You gotta fight her with arrows. These guys are weak to the elementals, so the blue one's weak to the fire arrows, and the red one's weak to the ice arrows. It does a lot more damage. I think it's like three times damage. It's a lot. Bye, Twin Mold. Well, that's number one. Now the second one will actually use the Giant's Mask. It's, it's almost like we're playing 3DS, right? I mean, we're, we're killing one with arrows, and then we're killing the other one with a giant form. Unlike that version, though, we're not throwing this thing around like it's Mario 64. We actually use our sword. <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing the boss fights. Like you get, you, you throw Twin Mold around like you know, you put your bat, your Bowser. Yeah. So this is the most radical fight difference between the versions because in this one, Giant's Mask just has you be big, and that's it. You can use your sword, and that's also it. You don't have access to your magic, so no great spins, but it's essentially just taking Link and stretching him out to fill the screen. That, that's it. In 3DS, you have more combat focus moves, because you can punch things and throw others, so it's a very different fight for that reason. And it's also very controversial, because some people love it, some people hate it. It's not very much of a middle ground fight. You take it or leave it. What do you think of it? I think it's just padded out too much. I like the idea, but it lasts forever. Especially if you don't use, like, quick killing moves. Like, if you spin the control stick while you throw the air twin mold, you actually do more damage, and the game doesn't tell you that. So if you don't know that, it can take, like, six hits instead of, like, two. So I think it's a little too padded out in that version. It would be a much better fight if they kind of explained things a little bit better and maybe took, like, half the health away. But that's it. That's our last remains. We have them all now, which means this is our last giant freed. Also means we have access to all four giants. That's it. I'm done. I'm leaving the rest to you. I'm going home. <laughs> Call us when you need us. We're like insurance companies. Just in the middle of him saying that, he's like, call... Uh, oh, hang on, my phone's ringing. Wait. What? Link, Link, I'm right here. You don't need to call me now. Just, just talk to me face to face. Look, sorry, I'm just making sure the number works. Forgive your... Friend. Nah. Wait, what do you mean by forgive? What friend? I have no friends. <laughs> Everyone I meet dies. I think I'm gonna die. Oh, it was nice knowing you, Tattle. No, actually, that's all the energy in the area getting pushed back into Akana. So essentially, we just lifted the curse. That's what that was. Yay, it's free from curse land. That means we can do a whole lot of... And... But most importantly, there's trees. I'm not joking, that's literally it. Just these little trees that sprouted up is the only difference in the area now. There's nothing new quest-wise you can do here, unlike all the other areas when you beat a dungeon. It's just trees. 
Oh, you can come to the fairy fountain. Oh. Yeah, I mean, uh, there you go. I could have done that at any time, but uh, here we are. I think this fairy uh, bleached her hair a little too much, because that's very blonde. <laughs> like, pure yellow blonde. Also, all the other fairies so far is I'm going to give you this magical spell where I'm going to enhance your powers. Just like, I got this cool sword. I got a cool fairy sword. To be fair, this is the best sword in the game, so it is worth it. And it's a C button item too, meaning if you get Jinx, you could still use this sword. It's a really cool idea. You kind of get it very late in the game, so it's not that useful, but it is a powerful weapon. The most powerful in the game. Is that kind of like the bigger on sword? Yeah. Because it is a two-handed weapon, so you can't use your shield while using the sword. So there's one more thing that we can do here in Akana. And again, you don't need to actually beat the dungeon in the area to do this. But you will need light arrows from the dungeon. Hence why we saved it until now. Everyone knows there's always a secret behind the waterfall. Not always. Always in Zelda, though. <laughs> 